Many people are familiar with this famous Denisovan bracelet. It was found in Denisova Cave. It was named for a hermit that used to live there in a much more recent time. In that cave, there have been a lot of findings. This being about the most important one, well, also there's a finger bone that whenever DNA was able to be pulled out of it showed a Denisovan ancestry that mankind had wondered about for a difference of people in the Southeast Island area and Orient and through the Himalayas and such. Through deeper tests we find out that they carried a gene to be able to be more up in the mountains and a lot of other interesting facts to them. And we've probably gone through a lot of that because of artifacts like this that are associated also with the site. But there's a problem with that association. This is made out of chloride. And it really looks kind of black and almost like a midnight with little white pits all over it. But if you bring it out in good sunlight, or perhaps in front of a fire, you can see a glow through it showing that jadish green color that's here. The problem ensues that they've gone over and over on this testing here and redone and so on. And you find out that the layer that this has been found associated with in a Denisova cave is layer 11, spans quite a bit of time, almost 10,000 years worth of time. And then this bracelet was found put on a top sediment that was already inches, inches deep above where the Denisovan bone find is. And the way I understand it, in this strata that's going here, of course, deeper is older, and the Denisovans that would have been there sit at about 51,250, give or take, I guess, a little over 2,000 years on either side of it. But the layer that this famous bracelet was found in is actually about 9,000 years off of that number in the top part of strata 11, showing some 42, right around 43,000 years. I may be off a little bit of my dates there. But the problem with this is that if you take the oldest that this could be sitting there in that strata, and the youngest that the Denisovan bone strata shows in it, there's a span of over 4,000 years, almost 5,000 years, give or take a little bit. And it was clearly stated in another article that they had here that it can no longer be associated with this Denisovan bone that's been found there, and the occupation changes. And the odd thing is, is this now suddenly dates to about the time that you would find Neolithic modern humans coming in there, Cro-Magnon types if you will, Homo sapiens, not Denisovans. And of the other artifacts that are with them also at the level this is at, and not necessarily Denisovan, show you some of those effects. Let's take a closer look at it. For one thing, that hole that's been drilled into it extra, and it itself is one thing, but then there's these cave bear necklaces, which I'm not going to say has to be something that is Cro-Magnon, but it's well associated with them and been found in quite a few burials. Over here on the right, you can see a depiction of the way it would have looked sitting on the wrist, and it would have had a break in it or the person would have to have a much smaller wrist than we think Denisovans are now and a lot of people think they may have been over six foot tall and some type of giant or could this be for a young girl or something it would have had a bangle hung from it in that hole that's there and there are other finds associated with that too little harpoon type blades 
that are there that don't seem to associate with the level of technology that you see in the green bracelet. It's like they weren't too good at this or that, but meh. And they drill perfect little holes in the bear teeth and so on, but meh. But then you take it to stone, something much more difficult, and something that's actually crystalline type form, like this, and are able to pull this off. This is one of the greatest ooh parts in archaeology for if you were to tell somebody that they went into that cave for some silly reason couple of thousand years ago whenever this artifact we believe could have been made by humanity they must have taken a little post hole diggers and dug down about six and a half feet or whatever and then threw it down in the bottom of it and then put the dirt back in just like the layers around it so perfectly that the people were unable to discern that that had happened or this is something that's a little bit out of its league especially for all of humanity that's around at this time. This is super advanced. And I've seen a lot of people try to take off with this idea that Denisovans are super advanced. People like Andrew Collins have tried to turn around and said, well, Gobekli Tepe was probably built by Denisovans. And they did this and they did that and all of these things. And they, they were the ones that were from the spacemen and all these other things they come up with. And uh, strangely, we find out now that no, I mean, nothing to take away from Denisovans, but they seem to have been able to do waterborne travel, at least enough to get into Sahul and all the things that go along with that. But that's hybrid forms, too, that we find in there. And I've recently did a video about that, and that there were hominid forms there that lasted from 7,000 B.C. all the way up to 1,500 years ago, or 500 A.D., which is an incredible thing, along with a few other videos showing hominids reaching much more close in a modern time but now this is not something that's a hominid even though Denisovan is looked as a somewhat advanced and a cousin or a twin or sister or whatever of Neanderthal contemporary similar because Neanderthal is much more advanced than any like Homo erectus forms no matter where we're looking at but Cro-Magnon types, the Altai mountain areas and coming through at about this same time would actually have to date that somebody might have done this. That's not associated with Denisovans, but really, truly the modern humans that were already extant at this time. And so here's a look at another bracelet that they've had here that was done, I believe, in ivory. And they've got another one that's done in stone. And this thing is near perfect. It would be like if somebody was to make a pottery and then a lip on top of a pottery and then somehow as it's spinning, slice it off with a knife, cutting just down below it and letting it dry and perfectly flat and sanding it off or doing something like this. Now you could say that this is sheathing the outside of a mammoth the circumference in the outside of it and that they actually cut off a little slice of it like they're cutting off a carrot and they just chopped off a slice and then ran a hole through it too but strangely enough they seem perpendicular and not really screwed off of each other and that almost some hole saw type thing was being utilized at that point now we know down here in the bear teeth that that's what's happening. In fact, there's three different sizes of holes going on here. So different tools using it for different ones, making it happen. But the oddity here is this is not ivory or tooth or something like that. This stuff has a pretty good Mohs scale onto it. That's the one on the top left. And it too has a hole that's just popped right through it. Now if really closely examining it they see the screws going into it and it looks like it perpetually goes one way pretty much especially at the end where it would have left the scarring they may have started going back and forth back and forth like a fire starter situation but just chewing through it but at the end they kept going one way and pretty damn fast so it could have been done that way the whole way through which doesn't make sense if you have a bow 
and you're using it in the way of a fire starter or something like that with pressure on it, it's going back and forth and back and forth instead of continually in one direction. Right? So you'd think that somebody would hook up a long rope to it and you'd have other people pulling on it with a group of people that are holding on it right there and it's all braced somehow and all this stuff going on and then that rope is pulled perpetually at fairly the same speed it says they seem to do this thing it doesn't seem to be shifting in speeds because they did test where they're going ruh, ruh, ruh. no that's not it it's like and it's almost like a drill to where it would have had a near constant speed if you will if you understand what I'm saying quite remarkable artifact here but then again we've tried to accredit it to Denisovans and here's this cave and I've shown this a few times in my videos we've talked about it here and here's some of the little artifacts that are thrown with it shown with it and fair tea things that almost look like little plum bobs like for fishing and things like that but right above that one in the middle see the one with the three holes in it and the three holes in the one on the right and the little tag in the middle Notice how the two holes on the outside of either one of those oblong paddles there are bigger. They're made for your fingers to fit into them. And then in the in-between, a rope is tied and it's doubled over, right? And it goes through that middle piece. And there's holes going through that middle piece that have been drilled to there. And so it's separated. But then you spin that thing up. And I've never seen anybody do this, but there are even kids' toys that do this. And you pull the thing apart and the pressure of it trying to unwind makes the thing in the middle spin and it whirs and it goes woo, woo. And you can pull it out real hard and then kind of let back and let it pull pressure when it pulls back and let it go all the way and then kind of sag and then pull back again and pull back again and you get this woo, woo, woo. And it can be heard for quite some distance. It's got a low sound to it too. And someone even said... Uh, long time ago I don't know which one it was that even elephants can hear this thing and the sound carries in certain ways a long distance there's another type of device people use like this that's really a paddle stone attached and you whir it around above your head those have to be made just right too or they really don't do anything so in your top left hand corner you can see I believe the same one that we were looking at before and while you can look at it and say it's not perfect or anything and the one below it is surely not perfect. What you do see is that it's a near perfect hole in it. And then there's wobbly effects to it. And that, so that's made me think that it's just a cross section of that mammoth. And a lot of people would go with that. But the one on the top seems a little bit too symmetrical to try to say that. And then it's been worked to that point. And if it's been eroded to the point that it doesn't quite look perfect anymore. It's been 40,000 years or more here more like 50 yet how would somebody be able to slice off a mammoth at 40 50,000 years ago in a perfect slice like you're cutting off another slice of bread and it does it well enough like this that it doesn't seem to be I mean you can come up with ideas and how they side slaw you know uh, did a uh, sliding back and forth rope with grit on it, slowly boring through it or whatever. But they'd have just been hacking at this thing like crazy. And then they've worked it to the point of polishing. Honestly, whenever you look at this and you look at those points on the right, you can tell that those aren't even worked yet. They're just like the cores that are set up just about ready to go. But you would probably work that to another level at that point. But they're set up ready to go. And this is with a burial practice, so giving him his stuff and his extras. But just almost at this point in time, just as important as any artifact on here, as well as the bracelet in the bottom left-hand corner, is the little bitty skinny thing that, finger of God, is right here. Because that's blown up in comparison, otherwise it would be some 9-inch long knitting needle thing, but this is a needle made out of bone, a splinter of bone, and then worked finely, and then had a fine hole put into it. And this is to sew up fabrics and things. And this has got to be some 50,000 years old. 
yeah, we can take two off of 48,000 BC, whatever you want to do off of that, or 2000 AD. And something of that rate. And that's pretty important because somehow that's connected with certain people through this earliest time until in the 20,000s BC, 20, 28,000, you find it in the coming out of this toolkit of the Altarian Mosterian goes on through and then all of a sudden there's those Salutrians that show up and they've got these pins that look like that but then there's also some people that are supposed to be in America and predate the hell out of this Clovis and they have the same thing in fact one of the points they found is made out of a odd type of stone that's only found like in between Spain and France <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I know it chokes me up too. Pardon me. Get a drink here. So, oddly, this can't be necessarily associated with Denisovans so much. And I don't even know which one of these artifacts, which few, which set of them, might be deeper in that 11, 11 to 12 because that's going to be the occupation whenever they were there, pretty much. And then there's a gap. It seems like it's almost on purpose that there's been this big focus put on that and tries to take the idea out of early modern humans, Cro-Magnon types, and how advanced they were than everyone else, especially when we find out their genetics from at least 30,000 years are still here today. So where does this all this changing, evolving, and all this type of stuff comes on from one single point? It never was supposed to mean that way. In fact, at this time right here, we're looking at a modern human's remains working his way through. And you look here, you can see down in that hole, and I hope it shows up good enough, but you can see this screwing pattern on there that looks like sometimes when we talk about the bore patterns on... Egyptians going through granite with a fairly good speed on it but then if it went back and forth it would eat that line off of it and put back scratches and everything and they say well it could have been done back and forth until right now but the very last one through that was done in another way and another oddity to it is it is tapered at that time too if it was it would make sense to us with our the way we do our drills instead of being tapered that they're straight and so it should go straight through and not tapered but you know but there's a whole lot of bits that actually have a camber to them like this so you can see you can't really see through it here it doesn't necessarily have the translucent so you get a little bit more light on it these white specks that are showing up in it and again without enough light it really looks like it's black got the number on the end of archaeology see how it is is this didn't even come on that lady's arm because they can't even find the other part of it and believe me they've dug through that dirt because there should be another three-quarter part if you can take like a bangle and slip it on sideways on your wrist and get it on there otherwise it's a full circle and you have to be able to slip your hand in there and a girl of about six or seven years old would no longer be able to do so. But strangely, they say some of the wear on this thing shows that it was kept long, long after it was made. Perhaps leave for generations as a keepsake. And we've talked recently about keepsakes and matching stones and things like that. And this could have been something along like that that finally got buried with this person that we don't even have the remains for anymore. It eroded away. Actually, the Denisovan eroded away all except for these finger bones. And in another site, they have a chip of a portion of a jaw. Mandible, if you will. Pretty amazing. And you can see some of the scratching that's on here. But then also, underlying all of it, you can tell that it's been polished to this point. It still has a shine to this day, even though scratching all the things that it went on. And being kept after the fact of it breaking for so many years before. Kind of like those jugs in Egypt that just got 
deposited all at once at their very first dynasties that people often claim are the Lantean type thing that they had just kept. Never put them in burials, boom, they always just kept them generation after generation, but whenever that epoch hit that they all sacrificed them for it in a strange way. Again, we're looking at 40 to 50,000 years in a cave system there, and at this same time there are hominids. In fact, into a very much more modern time, there are hominids that actually get admixed into their modern situations that go on here, but it looked like we were talking about Denisovans, which are involved in a lot of people through that area and down to the south and into the islands and Sahul and towards Australia and so on. But now it looks like the people that came after that, at least five to 9,000 years, if you will, were the people that are responsible for making this incredible bracelet. Make no bones about it, a bracelet that looks as fancy as this. In fact, oddly, when they have it on display, they have it like some Cartier wrist piece that's sitting out here with a mannequin's wrist on it, giving you the idea, hey, see? But uh, it's incredible for its time. It's an ooh part by itself, as we talked about before, regardless of who it's supposed to be associated with. In time, the way archaeology looks at these things, this thing predates the idea of you thinking that people could have been building something like this. You could say, well, it was really found in ancient Egypt, about 2200 BC or so, and somebody could get that pulled off in your mind. But to turn around and say that this was found with a UG at 50,000, 40, 50,000 BC, it doesn't really register, does it? Well, with this new finding that they are showing here, this piece seems to not be associated even with the Denisovans, although it may be even older than the 52,000 years and may have been kept for quite some time. One would probably think a few generations at best, but it's entirely possible it went on for longer than that and was passed shaman to shaman and so on. Really, we'd only be speculating and making up stories on that. And See, the issue is the other part of it wasn't found in there, and believe me, again, they've sifted that whole place. So let me know what you think about this uh, down in the comments. But uh, again, they've redated this. And in the redating of it, they find that they can no longer associate it actually with the layer that contains the Denisovan bone that made them try to say, look, the Denisovans had this. It comes much later. In fact, at the farthest reach of the dating, they can't overlap it. Peace.